Brexit, which I believe is short for brain exit. The <laughs> official word for when everything that makes sense goes out the window and everyone is just stupid all the time. <laughs> Halloween Brexit. <laughs> Look, Brexit is plenty scary enough without adding Halloween to it. It's like we found out there was a meteor rapidly approaching Earth and named it Weinstein. It's overkill. <laughs> it's complete overkill at that point. Hold on, hold on. If all that matters to Brexit supporters is what happens in their eyes, we may have just found a solution. Cancel Brexit, but allow everyone to say that it happened if it makes them feel better. That way, no devastating economic consequences and Brexit supporters get to live happily ever after in their own personal United Kingdom of the imagination. <laughs> But, but Julian Assange, the most controversial Australian export since Vegemite. <laughs> this, that's a weird tone to take on a story that's this important. Yes, his arrest sparks a difficult debate about the efficacy of journalistic protections in the age of cyber espionage, but look how bad he looks! <laughs> he looks like a peeled potato rolled in spider webs. He looks like Kenneth Branagh's ghost. He looks like Gandalf fucked his stick. We're having fun! <laughs> We're having fun, aren't we? drugs. On one hand, America's war on them has been a complete catastrophe, but on the other hand, it did give us this photo of Nancy Reagan sitting on Mr. T's lap, so it wasn't a complete loss. And by the way, I pity the fool that didn't think they were gonna fuck after that. <laughs> Look at Kermit, West Virginia. Named, of course, because it's where Kermit the Frog lives with his secret second family. <laughs> oh, that's right. He's in a throuple with two salamanders named Francois and Gary, and they are very, very happy. It was... It was never you, Miss Piggy. It was him. <laughs> they, and just to be clear, we mean every resident in Kermit, not every resident in Kermit. Kermit... <laughs> Kermit is a top, I'll have you know. Not that that is any of your business. <laughs> but you can't put McKesson in charge of monitoring McKesson. If the bears in your zoo get out at night and start mauling the other animals. You don't deputise one of the bears to monitor the situation. And I know what you're thinking, but John, I've already bought him a little sheriff's outfit to wear, and I think he'd look great in it. And yes, of course he would, but at the end of the day, bears are gonna bear. It's just in their nature. And again, before you say, well, I've spent quite a bit of money designing a custom-made sheriff's badge just for him, don't you think the bear will recognise the gravitas of that symbol and feel compelled to grow and change his bear ways in some way? No, I don't, because bears respect nothing. They they, they think the importance that we place on symbols and status makes us weak. They value nothing but blood and strength. And I know what you're going to say now. Is there anything I can do? The answer is, of course not, because while you were talking, Sheriff Bear mauled you to death. You're dead now. Goodbye. Why are we still talking about this? Put him in jail! <laughs> and, and honestly, I'd watch an entire show that is just that guy telling me where to put things. <laughs> McKesson executives, put him in jail! These carrots, put them in soup! <laughs> this group of corgis, put them in tiny boots! <laughs> they should be in boots! It would be like using cocaine for a toothache, which, incidentally, back in the 1800s, people actually did. <laughs> what an idea that was. My tooth hurt this morning, but I took some medicine, and now I'm really fucking psyched about 20 different business ideas. I'm gonna write a screenplay. I know it's the 1800s! <sighs> Not bad for a family whose very name sounds like a Hamburglar-like villain that steals testicles. <laughs> oh, no! The Sackler came in the middle of the night and now my penis is shivering. <laughs> and I know this isn't the point, but just spare a thought there for the Guggenheim janitor who has to clean all that up. <laughs> Dennis didn't take millions from the pharmaceutical industry. Dennis gets $15 an hour and maybe the occasional chance to masturbate on a Cezanne. <laughs> look, look, hey, I didn't say he was a good janitor. I just said you should think about it. The, the blizzard will be so deep, dense, and white. And look, as a tagline for Frozen 2, that's pretty good. <laughs> but it's troubling when applied to addictive fucking painkillers. He's an incredibly rich man, and it's genuinely easier to find multiple image options of birds standing on turtles <laughs> or babies that look like Wallace Shawn. <laughs> and let's, let's all agree, those babies look a lot like Wallace Shawn. <laughs> it also doesn't even make any sense. He's furious at the people who are part of the problem, but the people he's angry at helps make him incredibly rich. You don't see Adam Levine releasing a song condemning horny middle-aged women, because that would be hypocritical. Who do you think made you who you are, Adam? It's your just dangerous enough for suburban moms to masturbate to energy that got you where you are today. Show some respect to your base, son.